Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of Falcons Web TV. Once again, I am your host, Damon Markowitz, and once again joined by Falcons President and General Manager Bruce Landon. How are you doing today, Damon? Good, how are you? Great. Great. We went to a roundtable discussion today <laughs> as, we, uh, as we continue to move locations. I'm going to yeah. confuse you one of these days. Yeah. Every time you try to find me, we're somewhere new. Today we're in the Falcons Players Lounge within the Falcons Locker Room. Uh, a lounge that is uh, pretty much designed for the guys to be allowed to kick back a little bit and uh, get away from the, the, the monotony of the locker yeah. room and just come in here. Usually there's a t big screen TV set up where they can right. get the NHL package, some computers and some uh, couches and things. But uh, having been a player yourself, is just a nice place to get away from well, the locker room. Well, when I bit. was a player, we never had this luxury, <laughs> believe me. Uh, but this is nice. And, and these are some of the amenities the, the NHL teams look for for their players now. And we've got a great setup here. Uh, you know, we've got the computers for the players to look at video clips on, uh, which got a lot of use this year. And of course, as you said, the big screen TV, they can watch the NHL packs. It's just really a place to rest. And, and players are at the rink a long time now. It's not like they're in just for an hour and a half of practice and away they go between their off-ice conditioning and other things they have to do and medical treatment. So they need a comfortable place there to hang out. And uh, uh, this, this room here gets a lot of use. And, you know, between putting bagels and fruit and coffee and things uh, behind us here, uh, it gets a lot of use, and I think it, it's, it serves its purpose well. I know the coaches like it because it gives them a chance for a room to do video sessions right. during the season. And I know last year we made the transition uh, with uh, with um, Columbus coming in. This was a room as guys were coming in to see the locker room for the first time, uh, kind of eyeballed it, looked at it, and really impressed them right away. Well, right, right away it impressed the players. Uh, nothing against my good friends up in Syracuse, but the facility we have is, is much newer and much better than what they have there. And the players who had been in Syracuse the previous year that came into our facility and they saw the players lounge and the medical room and uh, the size of our locker room and the size of our weight room uh, the amenities are here and, and when Mike Priest the president of the Columbus Blue Jackets came in and visited us this year he was just uh, really blown away by the facility we have and what we can offer his players for development purposes so uh, that's one of the reasons it makes the NHL teams happy to be here and uh, because of the new facility and like you said the big the big screen here for video purposes so it's uh, it serves a lot of purposes but it's certainly it's impressive to the players to have this and thankfully, the ping pong table that was in here has been removed uh, yeah. from a couple seasons ago. Yeah, that was something. Columbus actually uh, didn't want the ping pong table. Uh, I guess it's something they don't have in Columbus, and uh, they wanted this. Uh, they wanted it out of here. So uh, I think Robbie Shrimp had paid for that. I wasn't it Robbie had paid for that ping pong table, and I don't know who took. I think Bob Oliver may have taken it back days up. So yeah, I think it, he packed it up last summer, and he's got it in his basement he somewhere. Snuck it out of here in the middle of the night. Yeah. eBay, eBay, <laughs> eBay. next. <laughs> Well, before we once again get into another busy agenda, another uh, busy week of Facebook chats, a lot of great topics being discussed, don't forget our social media fronts, uh, our official Facebook page, our official Twitter page, uh, once again, updated daily, sometimes hourly. If you go to falconsahl.com, the easiest way to find those, look at the bottom, there's a link to both the Facebook, a link to Twitter, uh, join us on those avenues, even though it's the off season, everything, uh, every day, something new going on. Uh, today, the final day of the eBay uh, auction actually probably when you see this that'll be over but we had once again had jerseys on there for the ebay auction a lot of busy things going on within the organization even though it's may uh, there's no such thing as an off season i guess no anymore. off season in our business so you get a kick out of people say what do you do for the summer and they follow us around for a couple of days you'll find out it's a busy time right now a lot of, as you said a lot of things going on a lot of meetings and sales presentations and uh, just there's a lot of things every single day. I guess the only difference is we don't work Saturday and Sundays for the most part. Maybe you do. Well, right? gonna... in some, once in a while, I try to sneak out on a Saturday and Sunday. So. Well, you have to. And mix, mix around the golf a little bit, too. Uh, actually, this Saturday, we have the big pancake breakfast here downtown. Uh, big 375th anniversary of Springfield. Screech will be part of that, part of the parade, part of the pancake breakfast. And I'm going to start with Screech because uh, he's uh, a character here that gets pretty busy. As you can see, <laughs> our calendar here next door. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of events coming up for Screech, including a new promotion, grassroots promotion that we're going to be starting on May 18th next Wednesday. Where basically just getting Screech out there to promote the fact that hey, we're still around. Well, when people see Screech, it's uh, it, it, Screech represents the Falcons. Screech is synonymous with the Springfield Falcons, and obviously, when you don't have players around this time of year, we use Screech as, as much as we can. And you know, you've started a nice promotion here, which is going to be fun for the fans and. Uh, getting to reach out in the marketplace and that things like the pancake breakfast and different parades around town during the course of the summer months just keeps our name out there it's brand awareness and uh, you know the streets is very busy and as you know we get uh, as many requests or more requests for street appearances sometimes than we do players so uh, I don't know whether that's because Screech doesn't talk and the players do I don't know I've never tried to figure that out but uh, Screech does a great job for us and it really represents us well and at a lot of places where we need a presence and like I said without having players here Screech uh, fills that gap for us. Sure and just a quick uh, quick Screech update this weekend like I said at the Pancake Breakfast and he'll actually be in New Britain Connecticut on Sunday as part of Mascot Day for the New Britain Rock Cats so he's he's a busy bird and 
uh, you'll see quite a bit of him over the next uh, month or so around the streets and uh, check out Facebook a new promotion starting there next next week where you'll see him in random spots and just having some fun here in, in the off season as well and let's get into the agenda and I want to start where a place you just came from you spent a couple of days uh, out of the area at some league meetings yeah. uh, springtime league meetings uh, what can you tell us uh, what happened there at the league meetings? Well, we have uh, the league has four major meetings a year: uh, spring, fall, midwinter, and then your summer meetings. And the summer being your annual meeting. And the spring meeting uh, for the last few years has been in Chicago. Uh, it just makes it easier for a lot of the western teams to to fly into Chicago. We meet right at a hotel close to the airport there. So, uh, I actually got in on Monday. Had a meeting on Monday night, a dinner meeting with uh, Chris McFarland, assistant general manager of Columbus. Uh, it was a great. We spent a lot of time together going over. Uh, the holes to fill, free agency, the, uh, some of the direction, the strategy that uh, him and Scott Housen put in place for, for Springfield. Uh, pick my brain on uh, some AHL type players of, of who I liked, who I didn't like, and sort of took a long look at our roster, uh, what we felt we needed going forward for next year. And I'm happy to report that uh, Chris has done a really good job, as I knew he would. He's fully prepared to attack free agency to fill some holes, and you know, I'm not afraid to admit that. You know, he admitted that we do have some holes to fill, and we have to, you know, land a, a number one centerman, number two centerman, maybe a uh, left winger, uh, a veteran defenseman, and uh, take a look at the goaltending situation. So, uh, July first is a very busy time in the free agency market. That's when when really things start to, to percolate. So, uh, you have to be prepared going into that with your sort of your A list and your B list. And so, Chris and I spent some valuable time, not just on players, but on our operation, his operation, training camp. Uh, exploring the ideas of bringing Columbus here for a preseason game, which is a year out, takes a year to, to put together. So Chris and I are going to have a meeting in September, October uh, about that. Chris is the one who puts the preseason games together, so that's something down the road that we're certainly going to explore. Uh, he, he, he'd he be all for it if we can pull it together. So that was on Monday night, and then on Tuesday morning, bright and early, we started our Board of Governors meetings, uh, which is representation from all all the American Hockey League teams, all the governors, the voting governors, and a number of NHL people attend the meetings as well. And uh, very thorough, very well-run meetings where uh, the spring meetings is more about uh, everything from scheduling formats to divisional alignments to playoff formats, a lot on the hockey, sort of the hockey operation side of the business. Uh, Dave Andrews, uh, our president of our league, gives, gives a presidential report on sort of a recap of the year that just happened and financially how the league is doing, how teams are doing. Uh, Todd Fredrickson uh, does a really nice PowerPoint presentation to the governors on on best uh, business practices around the league, and you get a chance to see what other teams are doing on ticket sales and corporate sales, and uh, sort of gauge where you are. And there's a very very important meetings that are condensed into a very short period of time, but uh, very important meetings. And uh, flew back last night. Well, welcome back, and right yeah. back into another agenda. So, uh, before we get into some new topics, I want to touch upon uh, an existing topic that we brought up a couple a couple weeks ago, I think it was, and having some healthier food options here at the concessions. Um, got an email back from right. from the building that you forwarded to me, so proof that we do uh, we do take <laughs> it and do some research yeah. on it. But got some nice yeah. feedback from the building as far as those healthier food options. Well, one of the things that we're very comfortable with or happy with here, Damon, and you and I both know this, we have a very good relationship with Global Spectrum and a very good relationship with Center Plate, formerly BCG, that operates our concessions. And I reached out to Diane, who runs the operation here on behalf of Center Plate, and she got back and said they do offer... Uh, uh, wraps in, in the in the player in the uh, in the grill room, mm -hmm. and they are looking at a, a potentially other uh, a salad type items as well. So it isn't like it's just hot dogs and uh, French fries and uh, you know uh, greasy food. Mm -hmm. uh, they are looking at some some other items. They already do have good wraps and uh, looking at some other options as well. So it's something that uh, she's aware of. And uh, but they did get back to us quickly and said. Here are some of the options we do have, and here are some of the things we're going to look at as we go down the road. You talked about that grill room, and you, I kind of wonder out loud how many people may not even know that grill room yeah. is there and what's on the menu. You may walk past it and think it's either a private room or, or think maybe just the same menu that's kind of out there. But very important to mention that grill room yeah. does have a different selection of menu, and you can go in there. The public can go in there. Well, in the grill room, uh, it has it has a different sort of kitchen set up so they can do some, some food items that they can't do out on the concourse. And uh, the food in there is fantastic.